hello, you, everyone. You listen to the first episode of The Fight Game with Tim McCann. And today I have the pleasure of interviewing UFC uh, fighter Michael Beast Boy Davis, 8-2. and two. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing fantastic. Feeling good. Feeling excited. Ready to get back in the cage. Man, it's been, a, it's been over a year. And we're just uh, kind of picking up from there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, first, I want to thank you for the opportunity. And um, my next question to you is, when did your love for the fight game begin? Take us back to you and, and the journey of your uh, future of becoming a mixed martial artist. Honestly, I, I don't even like fighting. I like I like the training. I like going into my like the headquarters gym where all my friends and teammates are, and we all laugh, hang out, learn, talk. <clears throat> but then, uh, as a professional, I mean, in order to do that for a living, in order to do that every single day, I have to go and fight. So it's just kind of like a requirement. But it's a, honestly, it's a good way to test my skills, uh, see how I'm progressing and learning. Um, but I don't know. I, I would say that. I started getting good at it when I was like 20. I was wow. Old. Yeah. I started at 14 okay. um, wrestling, wrestling. And then I went into boxing at the same time. So I was wrestling and boxing, but then I went to college um, at 16 <clears throat> and left college at 19 and went back into MMA. But for the college years, I just focused on college. That's incredible. So, so you say your friends introduced you. So who were some of the friends that introduced you to <laughs> wrestling since you didn't like fighting at first? So who were some of the people that led you to start wrestling, to start boxing? Um, the bigger people of the, the senior year in, in high school, because I was so small. I got picked on a lot. So they kind of, without realizing, drove me into training so I can know how to defend myself, know, know how to kind of handle the situations a little better and uh, drove me into realizing a talent I never knew I had that I was good at fighting. I've never been in a fight before. Wow. Yeah. Even to this day, I've never outside, never been in a fight. That's crazy. That's crazy, man. So wait, so 16 years old going to college, explain that. Like, I mean, your parents must have been like, on you about academics like where did that passion for education begin because at 16 to go to college <laughs> mm, there's, there's no I was just young I started I think I started school early and then I doubled up uh I think 10th and 11th grade into wow. one year so I could graduate and I graduated with um advanced regents diploma when I was 16 yeah I That's turned 17 cool. that following winter but I got you. I got you. So transition. So you left, you graduated college at 19 years old. What got you back into mixed martial arts? Um, while I was in college, I got really big, really strong. And then my mom told me to try MMA. I wasn't doing MMA at the point. Uh, so I tried MMA. I went to this gym, started liking it. Honestly, just stuck with it and then realized I was really good. I started taking fights, winning every single fight. It mm. felt really good. It felt really good to win. So kept going. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And um, what were some of the differences between being an amateur and then becoming a professional? Like, what are some of the, the greatest battles you faced as an amateur? And what are some of the greatest battles you faced as a professional? Uh, let's see. As an amateur, I believe it would be the weight cut. Because as an, yeah, like as an amateur, you're kind of, I mean, you have your team, but really a lot of it's just based on you doing your own thing. And then uh, you don't know what you're doing. I mean, you're still an amateur. You've had maybe, even if you've had like five fights, you still don't know how to properly diet, uh, water load, nutrition, cut soda. You don't know how to do it all that. But as a pro, you have this uh, entire team behind you that's like, hey, you're supposed to be eating this. You're supposed to be here. Uh, your weight's two pounds heavy. You need to get down two pounds by the end of tonight. And like, they're really on you as a pro. And then with a pro, the rules change and like fights change. So um, normally you wear shin pads as an amateur and those shin pads are removed. So when you take your first pro fight and you throw that first kick and you collide shin to shin, you realize that this is 
a very big difference because it's a whole different world <clears throat> as well as elbows you can't throw elbows as an amateur and then as a pro yeah you get caught with your first elbow and you just it really opened your eyes like pro is very aggressive very different you really have to you have to condition your body to be ready for for a professional bout i got you as an, as an amateur i mean you're getting punched with bigger gloves shin pads so it's kind of like hard sparring pro it's it's a fight it's you just met me in the street and i'm fighting you that's kind of how it is i got you i got you so you talk about that first elbow what was that first elbow that first punch that that made you realize oh i'm in i'm in this is professionals now i'm i'm Um, in the fight game for real i got kicked in the face shin Mm. across across my face and my whole eye turned red and black and after the fight the during the fight i just kind of like ate it but after the fight, my like bloodshot eyes all the way through. My eye was black. It's like, damn, good. it wouldn't happen with shin pads on. That's crazy, man. So, how did you respond to that when you? I, I know you you ate it, but how did you like mentally respond to like getting hit in the face like that hard? Like, how you? Your adrenaline's rushing too much. Either you go to sleep from a kick, or it really just doesn't hurt at all. Mm. There's two there's two things. And even if you get knocked out from it, you won't feel anything. Your your adrenaline is so high, it just hit, your lights will shut off. That'll be the end of it. Or you'll get hit and just come right back. There's just wow. really nothing to it. I got you. I got you. So what led you to the name Beast Boy? When did you decide <laughs> to, to name yourself Beast Boy? And was it because of the Teen Titans? Yeah, it was because of the Teen Titans. Actually, hold on. So, as a kid, when I was growing up, uh, and I was starting to train, I was wrestling. I was just pure wrestling. But, as again, I was a boxer. So, during my first uh, moments of training, I would be able to adapt. So, if my opponent or my sparring partner was a boxer, I'd be able to outbox him. And then, if I was outboxing him and he shot on me, I'd be able to re- outwrestle him. And then, jujitsu. So, I was able to adapt, which is Beast Boy's quality. So, some kid... Uh, his name is Eric. He referred to me as Beast Boy, and I kept it. But I have so many of these little guys around. That so is, many. <laughs> I have them tattooed on me as well. That's crazy. That's crazy. Okay, okay. So, were there any other like action figure? This is this is not sports, but I'm just curious to know, like, yes. what other action um, um, heroes that you grew up watching? Um, that you were like, yo, like, did you ever, was there ever just Beast Boy or was there any other action figure or action star that you were like, man, I wouldn't mind myself naming myself after this guy? Um, Nightcrawler. Ooh. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the, the teleporting and the tail. So I, I thought that was, that was really cool. And uh, Kid Boo. Interesting. Yeah. Why Kid not, Bo- a, not a superhero, but the... The comical aggression and kind of attitude that he has is perfect. It's definitely something I would have changed my name to Kid Boo. Interesting. I like it. I like it. So, Michael, what have you learned um, from your losses and your wins? Do you feel like you learn more from your wins or your losses, or have you learned both equally? The only loss I really learned from was against Sadiq because when I took that fight, all all my fights, all the way up to that fight, I was just taking fights. And if I won, I won. If I lost, I lost. So thankfully, I just kept winning. But I would never study my opponent. I would never look at his videos. I would never ask who he is, nothing. I would just, they would give me this guy's name and I'd be like, yep, come on, let's go. And I'd do it over and over. So. After I lost that fight, uh, we were both in the hospital and I was talking to his coach, um, or, uh, get his name, Irving, Lloyd Irving. Here you go. And they were telling me how they had to find a way to beat me. They studied all my, my videos. They noticed I'm, I'm a big boxer, so they, I was heavy on my lead leg, and that's how they game-planned it. They game-planned it to come out and attack my lead leg until – my stance was all messed up. So then mm-hmm. after that fight, now I, I definitely watch my opponents, see what they're about. I don't really care 
if they're good or bad or what they're great at. I just want to see like, all right, so he's, he's crazy. He comes forward, that kind of thing. Um, he can mix it up well, but, <clears throat> and then, uh, I corrected, I went to Thailand to correct my feet so I can check. Wow. Picks. Yeah. I got you. I got you. I'm not getting kicked in my leg anymore. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Was there ever a time where um, you looked at an opponent and you underestimated his ability? Or, or do you feel like as a fighter, you never underestimated? You had that Mayweather mentality that said, I can't underestimate anyone yeah. in the Okay. I can't. You can't. Because, I mean, anyone can put you to sleep. Anyone can knock you out. Wild, crazy swing. You just happen to get clipped and knocked out. Yes, I've sir. seen people get knocked out with jabs. I've seen people get knocked out with like toe flicking the head and they just fall to the ground. So anything can happen. And I definitely treat every fight like it's going to be hard. I know like it's going to be a fight, three round fight. That's how I think about it. It's going to be a three round fight and I'm going to bleed. You're going to bleed. Someone's finishing or not. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The one thing that I noticed about you, Mike, when I was looking at your um, when I was looking at your resume, I noticed several canceled bouts as a fighter, as an amateur, as a professional. How do you mentally handle canceling um, people, canceling fights? Um, how do you handle that as a fighter? I mean, it does go both ways. And as an amateur, <clears throat> uh, I was trying to climb the scene. I was trying to grow. And people were always accepting fights and then backing out as an amateur. Um, they would accept a fight, look me up, back out. And it would be terrible. And I went like two years without an opponent. So I had to resort to boxing where even still I had people backing out in boxing. But um, I do understand people pulling out because, again, last year, uh, 20, 2020, worst year of my life, I pulled out of a fight twice and i had to i was so injured that if i took that fight there was no there's going to be no point in me trying mm. and for me to be in the situation to have to pull out of a fight i understand that even the littlest things can can cause a fighter to not want to fight a little kink in the elbow or shoulder while you're throwing punches it, and it's very annoying and you just think about it because when you're in a fight, if you get punched in it or if someone tries to submit you or bends that arm, you're going to feel that the rest of the fight. And you'll probably lose without being – you won't be able to bring your hand up. Something will happen. It's just little things. So we do have to treat a fight. Like we have to at least be capable of fighting. Yes, sir. And I understand yeah. that. Yes, sir. So how has COVID – and speaking of 2020, 2020 was a – was a bad year for a lot of people, for several people. Um, how how was 2020 for you when it comes to you being a fighter in this whole COVID situation? Uh, so January, I got hurt, broke my ribs. And I was injured, couldn't train, couldn't do anything until uh, like March 12th. So I get back in the gym, I'm like, I'm training light. I feel good. Two days go by. COVID shuts down everything. Everyone, everything's closed. Um, a month goes by. It's the end of April. Everything's open again. Well, not everything. Um, our gym opened to specific fighters as long as we get tested. So I go in the gym. I'm training again. I'm like 182 now. This is gaining weight. <laughs> and <clears throat> we all were. Oh, we all were. I know. <laughs> And uh, so I'm training when they're, they, I get a call from the management. They're like, Hey, that guy you were supposed to fight, uh, he needs an opponent for May. So I was like, okay. It's like, it's two weeks away. I was like, all right, uh, 145 or I'm like 182. Or like, uh, I, I would, let's try it. So I tried to make weight, um, got some weird infection in my face that was drying me out. And hmm. I couldn't, I couldn't cut any weight, like weight, water would not come out of my body. Wow. And I had people in the weight room with me in the sauna. I was running outside in the sauna suit. I was doing everything and I would lose like 0.2 of a pound after a whole day of sweating. So I had to back out of that fight. Um, then I got that 
issue taken care of. I, I got checked out uh, and put on antibiotics. I don't remember what it was, but it was definitely not fun. Yes, sir. Um, and you want to keep going? We have June. June, I got COVID. Yeah. Um, or something. I, I never tested positive, but I definitely had all the symptoms. <clears throat> but never, never one positive test. So after that, I'm starting to feel better. It's, it's been a couple of weeks. I am riding my bike. I'm like, okay, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I go to cross a crosswalk, okay, T bone by a car. Um, yeah. So now I'm, the whole left side of my body is fractured. I got some injuries on my right side. Um, now I'm kind of just chilling all of July, all the rest of July into August. I start training again. And you know how after you get injuries, there's some light stuff that shows up randomly. Yeah. So there you go. Those started popping up out of nowhere. So September, I get some injuries. Uh, my upper body, like my shoulder, my shoulder starts to be bad. It's fine now, but my shoulder was bad. So I was like, okay, I'll just resort to running. So I ran mm -hmm. 45 miles in a week, tore my meniscus. Wow. <laughs> yes. So it's been hell. It's been hell. Wow. So 2021, what are your goals? How's, how's 2020 looking for Michael Davis? What are you seeing for 2021? I want to fight three or four times, four or five times. I want to be healthy. I do not want to be injured. That's the main thing. I do not want to be injured in 2021. I want to be able to get my name recognized, create self-branding, help people. I want to help maybe like at least 50 people this year. Just do something small for 50 people. Make a, a, nice, a nice little change. Um, really figure out what I'm doing because right now I'm kind of just blind running into this fighting. I never wow. thought I'd make it to the UFC. It wasn't a dream of mine until there were some people were like, hey, you have what it takes to make it to the UFC. So I'm like, eh, yeah, but I don't know. It's, 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 fighting isn't like something I, I'm passionate about. It's not something that I wake up and I'm like, oh, I got to fight. It's just, yeah. not, it just ended up being something I was decent at. So I stuck with it. I respect that. I respect yeah. that. So then that leads me to my, my next question, which is what does success look like for Michael Davis inside the octagon, but also more importantly, outside the octagon? I think success would be being able to live without stressing, without looking at your bank account. <laughs> to me, to be able to go out and be like, oh, that's a nice jacket. Let me buy that. And without looking at your bank account, that's success to me. And then um, everyone in your circle, you're, you know you have your circle. They're all happy. They're all eating too. That's success to me. I don't necessarily think owning a home, a nice car, that's un, that's a, not a necessity in life because I could be content driving around the country in a van, training mm. at a bunch of different gyms. I mean, easy life. So yes, sir. Uh, yes. success is comfort. I like that. I like that. Okay. Okay. So the, and when it comes to like MMA, success to me would just be, you know, everyone's dream is to have that gold. Yes, sir. That would be my dream. I like that. So, so let's say a kid comes up to you and he's trying to become a professional fighter. He's an amateur. Yeah. What are your personal keys to success that you would give to somebody, to a boy or a girl who wants to become a professional like you one day? Uh, every fight, I feel like no matter what nowadays, just the fighters, the, the number ones, they're all grapplers. They're wrestlers, they're grapplers. They're really good at the ground. So start with jujitsu because jujitsu will teach you takedowns. It'll teach you ground game. Maybe not the striking aspect. So when it comes to the striking, I would say if you want to be able to use your kicks, start with Muay Thai. If you 
want to have better hands, quick hands, go boxing. But definitely those two simultaneously will uh, kickstart your training. Um, stick with it. It's so hard in the beginning. It's definitely yeah. unpleasant. It doesn't feel fun because no matter what you do, people are just better than you. Every single person in the gym has been there yeah. for a month, even just the, the month but still every single person is better than you in the beginning so you're gonna lose you're gonna get beat you're gonna get hurt but if you stick with it it pays off yes sir yes sir well where can people find you on social media and when will you want to fight next uh let's see so my social media is all mike davis mma it's across the board twitter instagram um i sh- should start a YouTube. I probably might yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah. I'm probably going to do that. Uh, oh, and Twitch. I'm starting a Twitch, so I'm going to start gaming. I'm a big Warzone person. I just got a PS5, so I'm going to be going crazy on that. Yes, um, sir. What was the other question? <laughs> oh, when, when do you want to fight next? When do you want to fight? I am fighting in two weeks. Yes. Something in the cage, yeah. 20th yes, of January. Uh, I feel fine. I mean, cardio wise, ready for five rounds, mentally ready for whatever. Always got to be ready for a war. I mean, this is just the part that comes with it. So I'm just thankful that I get to fly to Abu Dhabi. I mean, I've never been there, I've never been anywhere near there. So that's going to be interesting. We get chartered out there. So it's not a commercial flight, it's nice, relaxed. Um, yeah, regardless of the outcome, this is go out there, have fun, get a drink after you, do whatever. Yes, sir. So last question, last question. What would you put on your, your YouTube? So you created YouTube. Would you just do training or would you do anime? Like, would you do like video I'll do, games? I'll do a ton of stuff. Um, let's see. So I would one, yeah, I would do my, my gaming on there. Um, maybe some reactions or so that goes with the Twitch account or games. I would do uh, workouts for the people who wanted to see different variations of the stuff I do. Cause I do quite a bit of uh, odd and dynamic stuff, especially working with Phil DeRue. He does a lot of weights, a lot of body movement and body control. So I would do that. I want to start kind of like a series for myself where I will travel around train with the best of the best um, try to find the best gyms in each state even uh, depends on how well I can get this going and then uh, after I train there I want to spar their best person in the gym and then get that video on YouTube yes sir yes sir a nice little a nice little like three minute sparring session with the best person they have and, yes sir you know, I hold up Yes, sir. Well, you know what? There's one gym I want to shout out, Matrix MMA in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. They got a, they got dogs over there. Matrix. I have to check that out. Yes, sir. Yes, they're, sir. they're not too far away. I'm down in South Florida. so. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thank you very much, Michael Davis, for your time. Um, good luck to you in your fight on the 20th, man. I can't wait to see it. Hey, thank you. It's going to be yes, fun sir. to be back in there. Have a blessed day. You too.